well hello everybody so today will be my very first wedding vlog I have been wanting to do this for quite some time when I first started planning my wedding I immediately was thinking like OMG I really want to vlog throughout the process because um, anytime you're doing something major that's kind of like life-changing and a, you know a big point um, during your life like having a baby or getting married things like that it's cool to kind of chronicle it and be able to look back on that footage and those videos and just see yourself, you know, as you were going through the process. I really want to be able to share with you all, you know, throughout this wedding process because it has been crazy. And I mean crazy. Like, I, I'll talk about it later in the video. I think I'm going to touch on a few things. I have yeah, my notes. So here's a little bit of back there, background first. So I got engaged um, last May uh, right after my fiancé got uh, he graduated he asked me to marry him on the night that he graduated so it was really beautiful all of our friends were there because you know we were all out um celebrating his graduation so it was it was amazing literally um, but he literally asked me to marry him right when he was clicking the picture and it like my you can see on the picture he took i'm just like oh gee like i immediately was just like yes 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 and then i like pulled him up off his feet it was just it was amazing it was one of the most amazing moments of my life next to having my daughter you know hands down a big moment then i heard my friends like start cheering like it was good and people were there to record and you know take pictures and it was just the one of the most beautiful moments of my life so i'm i think about it like from a, a lot and i'll watch the video and just be sitting there cheesing super hard because it was a beautiful beautiful moment i just loved it but yes yeah, so as of this may Justin and I have been engaged for uh, about a year. You know, we're coming up on that year mark. Well, we uh, we passed the year mark because it was right around graduation. So it was right around Mother's Day. Um, so we are actually on track as far as doing like that one year engagement type thing. And I thought that we were going to be like, I thought it was going to take us forever to get our wedding together because it was just a super bumpy road because I live in Chicago. So... It's like now we can talk about this venue hunting process. Um, living in Chicago, the Chicago is a very expensive city. Anybody who lives here, you know. It's a major city, so it's very expensive. And if you are having a wedding in Chicago and you're having over like 80 people, you are going to have to cash out. And I don't want to cash out. I want to get a house, you know, soon. So that really caused like a lot of like frustration because what I wanted did not exist or it seemed like it didn't exist in my price range. And that's why I really can't like wait to share, you know, like, you know, with everybody, like, you know, the where my actual wedding is and what my location is, because it's a really fabulous wedding location and wedding venue. And it is a beautiful bang for your buck. And it's so worth it. But it literally took me forever to find my venue. I went to so many places, you know, I was I thought outside of the box, the box. At first, I was going to do a cocktail reception because I was like, you know what, that'll save a lot of money because then you don't have to have a full dinner. You're just doing like light snacks. Um, not even you don't even have to have as many tables, not as much decor. I was I like was willing to sacrifice a lot, but that just did not work because we both have very traditional families. And when you tell them they're going to be sitting, standing up at a wedding eating snacks, they're not trying to hear that. So yeah, that idea lasted for like 10 minutes. What else did I think? I thought of, I'm trying to think, what else? Oh, at first I was gonna go, I'm not gonna lie, I was gonna go super cheap at first and I was going to use like a convention center. I guess you can call it a convention center, like a civic center. I was gonna do that and just like decorate the crap out of it. But it just wasn't, it got less and less appealing and it's like yeah i'm saving money on like the venue but i literally have to hire in everything from like the bartenders to the actual bar i have to rent that you know like it got to the point where it's like yeah i saved a bunch of money on renting this place but now i'm coming out of like 10 or 12k for rentals sorry guys my uh this thing was looking weird but i'm like spending 10 or 12 you know a thousand dollars on rentals and on people to staff my event and it was just it was just extremely stressful so and not to like not to mention like in the process of all those random ideas i was still seeing traditional traditional places and the prices they were quoting were over like 12k just for the place and the food so it's like you know you have to pay for a lot more stuff than the than the venue and the food like it's just ridiculous so it's like if i'm starting off at 12 or fifteen thousand, my wedding's gonna end up being twenty thousand dollars easily 
when I'm done. And my max budget for, you know, at my wedding is well below that. I'm not going for the okie doke. I, you know, did a little bit of dress shopping because when you're when you get engaged, the first thing I think first thing women probably think about is like, OMG, what am I gonna wear? You know, you're thirsty to see what you're gonna wear to your wedding and you wanna go dress shopping and have that say yes to the dress you know experience and that is just so not realistic like I realized how unrealistic that was after you know I started I went dress shopping the first time I went I went by myself because I usually shop by myself and this is kind of that kind of person um and I just did not like anything that I saw and for one is because my budget wasn't I was being extremely conservative with my budget so when you tell them what your budget is they just show you like the little rinky dink you know boring dresses that don't inspire any type of excitement or anything like that but um so that was like a total flop and i was like you know i'm good on this i'll come back and try this again later and at that time i didn't even know what i wanted as far as a wedding dress but i think my, my second oh my second experience wedding dress shopping was it my second or my third i think my second i went with my fiance's family and we went to look at some dresses and things and i found two that i really liked but i ended up not getting them that day because they were above my budget and money does not fall out the sky and neither does no, the, neither does it have to when you're planning your wedding i think it's so much hype that surrounds like the whole thing that she's just thinking like it's like this go big or go home thing and it's like you have to really bring yourself back down to earth and it's like this is one day and not even like the whole day like this is 5 30 to 12. like when you break it down to that 5 30 to 12 like it becomes a lot simpler to make these decisions to be like no i don't need that no that's not necessary no that's too much it becomes really easy to say that and to keep yourself grounded because if you start thinking like this is my wedding day you know this is the best biggest day of my life you'll you'll start buying and doing things that you would have never really wanted to do or that or things that you just don't need to do and it just gets out of hand but for my third wedding dress um shopping experience I actually ended up having a very horrible, horrible experience. And I was with two of my best friends. I was with um, two of my bridesmaids. And um, we went into this boutique here where I live. And it was so horrible. The lady, when we first walked in, nobody approached us to even, um, you know, ask us if we needed help. They were just like, oh, if you see anything, let us know. So I'm like, okay, whatever, cool. I didn't think too much of it um once we were i found a few dresses that i started liking so i was like okay let me because you know no there was no attendant with me so i'm like how do i keep track of all these dresses that i like because i was only on the first rack so i'm like you know what let me snap a picture of the tag anybody who's been wedding dress shopping you probably always like oh yeah so when i walked in mind you there is no sign that says do not take pictures in our store no one said it when i walked in but mind you, as soon as that camera said, it made that little sound, SWAT came out the back room. This lady walked up to me. She told me, she's like, I am going, she's like, I have to, she, you have to give me your phone now and I have to see that you remove the picture. I'm like, man, you're not, you, you can't take my phone. Like, there's no way that you could touch my phone, take my personal property and inspect it to see if I deleted a picture. And it was like, before she even asked all that, I had already deleted the picture once they told me it was some huge situation. Like, they made the biggest ordeal out of it. It was so embarrassing. And the way they did it was just so, like, confrontational. And when she kept pressing me, like, after I had deleted it, to show her my phone, it's like, I don't have to show you anything. Like, you're not the police. It's like, I don't need to show them unless they have a warrant. I'm not to show anybody anything that's mine. <laughs> it's like, I don't know who you all think you are. It was horrible. And we ended up standing there for like five minutes more. And what really drove it home, what, is, what got us like running up out of that store is when the manager came up. And I guess like the, the earlier, the, the lady, the sales associate that earlier told me to delete the picture, I guess she had told the manager that I didn't delete it, which I had deleted it. it this picture had been long gone at this point of the tag. This was just a tag, y'all. Just a tag. So she came up and she demanded to see my phone. I was like, what is wrong with you all? Like, you cannot, that's not legal. You cannot demand to see my phone. You can tell me to leave, but you cannot demand to see my phone. That's not okay and it was like that situation was so i was it was so horrible to me and it like put such a damper on my whole excitement as far as my wedding that i was just like literally like out of it for a while i didn't do any like wedding planning i just was just totally disinterested 
because my feelings were hurt like I had had a horrible the first two experiences was just like uh well, you know whatever but that last experience was horrible like downright horrible my feelings were hurt so I was just like you know what I'm cool I just I was like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about this right now I'll just you know take a break from it or whatever so that's when I really um I kind of just started thinking really outside of the box as far as my dress then too because it was like you know what I don't really feel like dealing with that ordeal again because I had heard from um you know a few other people who didn't did wedding dress shopping that you do have to be quite strategic about what stores you're going into because when you're this color you're not welcome in every store you know even if you have the money to buy what they have it doesn't matter so you know unfortunately I was not too hyped to go try that again so I ended up buying my dress offline saved a ton of money <laughs> it's beautiful you know I love my gown it's duchess silk like oh, I love my wedding dress you know it took like two days to be shipped to me my wedding dress been chilling in my closet for months you know I don't have to wait I didn't have to order it from some boutique and then have them order it in the wrong size so they can purposely force me to get alterations and then wait for it months and months for it to come no 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 baby girl been chilling in the closet and I can't wait to wear her I try it on all the time I love my wedding dress and I'm so glad that I bought it offline and once I'm done with my wedding I can't I can't lie I'm not gonna share all my like you know details details as of yet but once this wedding is over I'm gonna tell you all every vendor I use you know the place I bought my dress from the venue everything I'm gonna share everything you know on YouTube because the people will be having weddings for you know years to come and if you can benefit from my trial and error and the places that I found then I would love to share it with you all but I can't lie I'm not gonna share it quite yet just <laughs> but uh yeah just stay tuned to you know you only got 60 days because the wedding will be here in like 62 days but yeah so I did buy my dress offline and that was um it wasn't stressful at all and I was very pleased with the whole situation so that's how I saved money on that I think I saved like half off of what my dress would have been by buying it online y'all so yeah look outside the box um what else so that kind of my next point was just like talking about how we've been saving money and because it's really important to us to not blow this day out of proportion so like you know being willing to hit the ground as far as like searching out a venue that was something that was really important like we put a lot of en energy into that and at first it was really frustrating but we were, we we're really grateful you know that we did stick to it and you know kept looking even when we got discouraged because we did get really discouraged because what we wanted just didn't seem to exist in our price range but just stick to it and you know remember what your budget is don't blow your budget out of the water if you cannot afford to this is one day it's one day and it can be a beautiful day it can be the most beautiful day of your life but it does not have to be blown out of proportion and you don't have to be broke after it's over that's not it doesn't have to be like that so know ahead of time like before you start doing all this planning know what your budget is know what you're comfortable with spending talk about it with your fiance and then stick to it and keep each other grounded remind each other like if anybody's like man let's just go ahead like no no let's not just go ahead let's just do it you know spend what you can and stay focused um the thing that really helped me is knowing what i had to have out of my wedding day because not everything was important to me it's you know on my wedding day i just want to have fun and i want to look beautiful and like that's pretty much it like as long as i am having fun and i look awesome and me and my fiance are celebrating our beautiful union that's all that matters to me you know like i'm not really big i don't care much about the food i want people to be you know enjoy the food but i'm not like super caught up on that like i'm making sure it tastes good or whatever but you know i'm not like super caught up on cakes because i'm i'm a, i'm not a minimalist but i'm very um i'm very simple so my cake is going to be all white with like fresh flowers i'm very yeah very simple when it comes to certain things like certain things just does not matter to me um i've been teaching myself how to do makeup so that i could do my own makeup i didn't want to blow money on that there's a lot of things that you have to spend money on on a wedding and i didn't want to spend money on a bunch of makeup i'm trying to think what else have i just like opted out of no i don't know limo i didn't see a point for that because my wedding and my my ceremony and my reception are in the same same spot i'm gonna be there before the guests get there might even leave after they gone so they won't even know how i arrived or how i left and neither doesn't matter because if they're not gonna pay for my limo then it doesn't matter um 
I'm trying to think what else. Like I have, I made my own veil. I'll show you all that. Well, you probably see it on the day of the wedding because I'm definitely gonna be vlogging on the day of the wedding, y'all. Coming to you live with the wedding, the wedding uh, footage. But yeah, I made my own veil. Um, I made my own wedding, uh, my belt sash for my dress. Like, yeah, when it comes to like decor shopping, I wait until Michaels has sales. You know, like I have like all the um, the craft store apps. So I have Michaels, I got Joann's. So I am constantly checking to see when there is a coupon. Let me show you all. So like today i went in i went to michael's today and i used the 20 uh, um 20 percent off coupon so that you know i could save on some wedding purchases i got my aisle runner and you know that type of stuff there today and i saved a bunch of money um you know be willing to do some diys if you if you are able to do diy projects or you know somebody who can you know figure out what is what actually pays off what actually makes sense to do yourself because some some projects don't make sense to do yourself and it's actually cheaper to have somebody else do it so really kind of sit down and crank sit down and crank out the numbers and see like okay we should do this we can do this ourselves and save money but this we need to just you know have somebody else make it or do it because that will save us money and time because some things are just too tedious and it just wouldn't make sense um and then staying organized the way i have stayed organized is of course with the wedding binder i think most women who have who are planning a wedding and if you're planning it yourself like i am you know they have a wedding binder it's quite essential um i got my principles for sorry the first page i don't flip through this page, binder so much the first page is separating a little bit and i need to fix it but i got my printable off of pinterest if you uh, look on pinterest for wedding principles there are a ton y'all so and then i just have you know like i have a page in here for my wedding party contact list because i want this to be like a resource guide for uh my hostesses who are running my wedding on the day of so they can just easily open up and say okay here's this person's number you know i have my vendor contact list in here and i'm not gonna like put this up because i don't you know i don't um want to just be sharing people's information because it's like all their address their phone number everything that we would need in order to be able to contact them and then I've even done my wedding day timeline already. You know, that's something that you all can see. Um, so it goes like by the hour, all the way from 7 a.m. that day till 12 p.m., you know, at the end of my wedding. I, I want to be able to see what is all supposed to be happening because I, this is not a fly by the seat of your pants type day. You know, it's quite serious. But uh, what else have I done? Oh, yeah, I, I keep track of everything I need to purchase on Excel. I use Excel a lot. So this is my wedding shopping list and I print it off. I update it constantly, um, check off things that I've gotten already and then reprint it off, that type of thing. And it keeps the total on the side of, you know, how much I'm spending on my decor. And this is not a template that I even made on, on Excel. So you don't even have to make a template, you know, or make an Excel sheet. You can just use the templates that are built into the Excel program and then, you know, plug and chug. This was actually a grocery shopping template and I just turned it into my wedding shopping list because it had the formulas that I needed built in. Um, what else? I printed off a bunch of state of checklists. So I'm probably going to go through one of these um, this weekend just to see where I'm at and check off things and, you know, make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Because I know I have a ton of DIY projects and it's time to mail out my invitations actually and I'm a little bit late with that. But yes, what else is in here? This is a really cool, like when I saw this printable, I'll try to include the link for this printable on in the description box because it is, I love it. And I actually shared it with one of my coworkers who um, is getting married next year. And she loves it as well. But yeah, it's like, oh yeah, and I included like some, these are no longer things that I'm using for my wedding, but they're just still in here. But um, I included pictures in here, like inspiration pictures. I think I have a picture for some hairstyles that I was thinking about in here. And I'm still not sure what exactly I'm going to do to my hair. And then I have like photo inspiration, like photos I want to take. Because I totally want to take some really cute pictures with Mackenzie. Um, you know, on the day of the wedding. And of course, I have some hair inspiration. And you see y'all see natural chica in here her hair was so beautiful on her wedding day i'm so mad that i um yeah you know, i cut my hair off because it was unhealthy it wasn't it wasn't like it, it had once been because it had gotten pretty unhealthy and my alopecia had taken out i had some it was just multiple lengths going on it was dry damaged i think i had got heat damaged it it was just bad so i wanted to grow it back out just to have like that really healthy hair that i used to have so 
but yeah and then also in here i include all of my contracts from all of my vendors and in the back what else in the back i have a like um what would you call this like this is like a little like a little envelope or whatever where i keep all of my receipts because at the end of this i really want to look back and be able to see how much i spent on my wedding and know for sure you know so i keep all of my receipts i don't throw any receipts away and um what else oh yeah i also diy my wedding invitations um i i am a graphic designer and a, a web designer so i designed them myself and had them printed at kinko's <laughs> it's like all, all of this none of this has to be as big as people make it like not no no shade to anybody who you know goes the very traditional route and you know spends money where money is traditionally spent but that isn't that wasn't something that i was interested in so yeah i went the diy route, diy route and if you aren't like into graphic design you could always go on etsy and purchase a principal a wedding principal template a wedding template principle i don't know how to say that but people have designed wedding invitations that are easy for you to print so all you have to do is either contact them so they can plug in your information or just have them send the template to you and you can plug it in yourself if you have like an editing program like illustrator or photoshop anything like that so there are definitely ways to save uh, money just to do your research let me see what i'm missing you all because i didn't got caught up in that wedding barter I love that binder, by the way. I keep it with me all the time now, especially since we're so close to the wedding. But yeah, as far oh, the last thing I really want to talk about is like what I'm most excited about. I think I am most excited about like seeing um, I want to I can't wait to see Justin's face like when I walk down the aisle or when I first like when the doors first open and he sees me for the first time. Like I cannot wait to see the look on his face and you know then just be able to you know be able to call him my husband. Like that's gonna be so incredibly amazing and I'm so excited. I'm so incredibly excited. Um I'm really excited to see my gorgeous bridesmaids because they are going to be stunning and I cannot wait to see my ladies. Um, I'm very excited for my mommy and my grandmother to be there to celebrate this with me because we don't have like a lot of marriages and things in our family so I'm really hyped, you know, for this day because I remember when I was younger I didn't imagine, like I never really, you know, thought that I, um, that this would happen for me that i would be getting married you know that i'll be 25 and marrying someone that i love so much you know so it's um it's like a dream come true so i'm really really amped about that um yeah this is gonna be a big day i'm really hyped really excited and i can't wait to share with you all too like i can't wait you know for to be able to get the footage back and be able to you know show it to you all because i really want to celebrate this with you as well and with my, all my friends and all my family it's gonna be a beautiful day july 25th i can't wait but yeah this is my first wedding vlog i'm so excited that i got to share this with you all um and i look forward to sharing like all of the details with you so please stay tuned for that um that after wedding vlog so that i can drop all the dirty details and you know share all the numbers and emails and websites for all my vendors and everything so yes just stay tuned and in case you all are, are wondering on my lips today i am wearing milani cosmetics um very exciting let me grab it no very tempting look at me i just got the name all wrong this is very tempting by milani cosmetics and underneath it i'm actually wearing this is um a wet and wild lipstick and it's sugar plum fairy so these two got me this i love it this color is pretty amazing it's like the perfect you know pur purpley color i really love it but yes that is all for this video um you know all as always Thank you so much guys for watching this video for staying tuned um please leave your comments um any tips that you have as far as the wedding makeup because i'm still figuring out like uh i bought a new uh makeup setting spray i got the urban decay all nighter makeup setting spray because i really want my makeup to be able to last but yes that's it i'm running out of space so thanks for watching guys make sure that you rate comment and subscribe i really appreciate you enjoy your weekend love you bye